Love this podcast? Support this show through the Acast Supporter feature. It's up to you how much you give and there's no regular commitment. Just hit the link in the show description to support now. Hello everyone, it is the Uncensored Match Build-Up Show here on Redmen TV YouTube. I am Paul Machen, Ross Chanley and Chris Pajak join me in the studio. <laughs> Out and down. Wow, what a madness appears. Um, Liverpool Man United, Old Trafford, f- Sunday, 4.30 kick-off. <laughs> Sunday. Flipping Sunday. <laughs> um, yeah, look, we'll dive into. We've got plenty of things to talk about. Least of all, the fact that we support, you know, a, a brilliant football club. It's always nice to have a good old chat about that. Um, but Ross, Liverpool United, I huge. Can't work out whether I'm mentally over Tuesday's game yet, and mm. whether I'm prepared for this one <laughs> to put myself through the ringer again. Um, it was quite nice last night watching the game that was end to end. It wasn't. I, I wasn't emotionally us. involved. In. <laughs> there wasn't yeah, us. there wasn't us. Yeah, it's like our oh, sad to sit back. You don't have to worry about any of this. It's fine. It's good. Um, but yeah, always a huge game. Record's not great there, but you know we've. All right, so far this season, well, unbeaten in 21, make it 22. By to, to, to expand on your point, our record isn't not great there. It's we've shy. won five of, tw- of the last 22 league games. Uh, so in this century, we've won since since the 21st in the 21st century happened. We've won five league games at Old Trafford in total. Yeah. Um, but we won the last one. Yeah. So that's something, right? I, I'm very careful uh, about here about, about how we talk about this because. It matters so much, doesn't it, Chris, these games where I don't like talking down our opposition. And we've had, we've had some doesn't good... matter, though, does it? No, no, it doesn't. But also, again, it's just how we how we are around big game, about big games of football, particularly enemies, and it matters more than normal games, is that it is a... Yeah, we've had a lot of fun this season talking about Manchester United and a lot of fun talking about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And we will do. And hopefully Maybe we'll, next we'll have more fun in, in the future to, to come. But, um, <laughs> look, I mean, the, the, the thing is, they had a, they came through a tough one in midweek. They were, in your words, you were sat here pre-filming and went, they were dog shit in the first half. It's weird because you're now seeing a different narrative. I'm seeing a 50-50 split between people going, people who, who, who aren't busy mates with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer going, well, that's not really good enough, and they, you know they can't keep having to bail themselves out with late goals and all that kind of stuff. And I'm seeing the other ones who go, "Well, come on, let's let's look away from the fact that United aren't great and they haven't got a great tactical plan and they're not very good defensively and they've got a lot of issues and lack of quality in the field and blah 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 blah." That was a great comeback when we should be enjoying those moments. I actually, I, I think that's a perfectly, that's actually a perfectly fine analysis to some extent. They just come down down from two 0 down. They were coming into this game if they'd lost that game. <laughs> They would be in the. They'd be ruined by the time we got yeah. to this game. Was Look, be I am all about enjoying your wins when you get them. Yeah. I would have gone mental if that was a result for Liverpool, where yeah. we've come back from two 0 down at Anfield and won three two. I would have, but I would also like to think that I'd recognise that he's not good enough at yeah. the same time, yeah. and they can both go hand in hand. Enjoy the win, enjoy the night, have all the fun in the world but he's still not good enough for Manchester United. Yeah. And he never probably will be good enough for Manchester United. And that's the difference. And that's why Paul Scholes, and I, I, I hate the way like they just kept that Paul Scholes last night because he didn't really have any more to say than yeah. his first sort of monologue about it. Like He doesn't think he's good enough. He doesn't think that the tactics were good enough. Um, and he didn't think the performance was good enough. But they kept on baiting him and baiting him and baiting him. And I'm sure that's all that's been spoken about on Twitter in in Manchester United Twitter today. And I'm sure he's got dogs of beast for it. But he's not wrong. Like, if you go against a good side like that, you're likely to get picked off. I actually got a sense of that um, the other week doing the Gary Neville overlap show where I think Neville, I never let them double down on this on Monday Night Football. I think he's, he's keen to not throw Ollie under the buses. His, his logic is, which is kind of noble in some regards of like, he's staying this season, so let's, it's not even worth talking about. Well, that's great, Gary, but it's also, you know, this is how footy works. It's your job. So it you is your job. You, you're league. getting paid. We're paying you a lot of money to, to speak on that. And that's how it is. We're Sky subscribers paying a lot of money for that, for the pundits on there to do the, to do the job. Whereas Paul Scholes, in there, you could sense he's just a bit, he's not asked. He hasn't got a media profile to protect. And he, he, he and he is very dry. I don't think he's a particularly great pundit, but I also get in the sense to Chris' point, he was him coming out and and speaking quite openly about it. 
that's the, the cracks are starting to show there. Yeah. But I think he said himself last night. He said, "I know I'll get abuse for this." But here's here's my here's my here's my opinion. Sorry, that was I was trying to do that way. Um, <laughs> he he will get it. But, but I, I like that honestly. That's what I want as a, as a neutral fan. I know he's my ex my United player, and my United legend. But people want that kind of that honesty. That Neville can can still say he's he's ta- he's not tactically inept or he's not good enough, but without saying he wants him sacked. It's, you know, he's also, but you can't as man, man, you associate with Manchester Man United because they've been giving it the, 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 the you know like the on the high horse about how good fo- good football and titles and all that kind of yeah. stuff for too but long. It, it's an accumulation of different things. So I think they played like Newcastle, Villa, West Ham, um, and there's there another game in between that, but they haven't been good enough. And they're showing signs. And I tuned into Mark Goldberg last night. Uh, I think it was at half time, and he said, "Why do Manchester United have to be a goal or two goals down?" Before they turn up for the, for these games, and that's where it's like it's the players that are either going against the tactics or they're going oh shit the fans are on about we need to do something. And I was having some conversations yesterday, and everyone's saying the same thing. My United have been crap for the past three, four, five weeks. They've brought a lot. They've been a moment team, but you can guarantee on Sunday because it's Liverpool because it's Old Trafford. Those players that have been shite will turn up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it depends on where whether Oli Gunnar Solskjaer decides to put them in a four-two-four formation or not. Yeah, uh, I very much doubt that he will. I very much think it's going to be, you're not going to like this Old Trafford, but we're going to play counter-attack at home yeah. against Liverpool and we're going to look to try and get whoever it is, probably Rashford, in behind St. Alexander-Arnold. He did pick up an injury, yeah. didn't yeah. he? But I don't know whether he was out out or or what, like, you know <laughs> what I mean? But it doesn't matter. Whoever's playing against Trent, that's all they looked for. You know, it was Harry Maguire, it was Luke Shaw, it was ball over the full-back. Yeah. Atlanta were playing a high line and that's the way that they've played against us recently. I imagine that's the way that they're going to play again against us. And are we going to be able to deal with that and control the game and win the game? Because it's going to be a raucous United, especially if there's rumours of other stuff going on around the game as well. Um, the idea, by the way, I'm sorry, and I know the Liverpool United is the biggest spectacle, so if you're going to make a protest, which is, I think, what you're referring to, if you're going to do it again, then it is the one with all eyes on Sunday Sunday you know, afternoon, 40 Super Sunday, the whole world's watching that game. So I get it, that's still the biggest platform, but I'm sorry, lads, but where have you been? Where have they been all summer? With these protests, like I, you know, again, this is the problem. Is you the message gets undercut with all this stuff. It's I just find it absolutely, absolutely mad. You know, it's like green and gold until our tactics get old. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Until our Ronaldo, we get bored of our Ronaldo <laughs> celebrations. It's not as catchy, <laughs> yeah. um, admittedly. Like, but um, now I wonder whether you'll end up with a pitch battle about the lads all in there doing the Ronaldo celebrations out out, out the front <laughs> in front of the Holy Trinity <laughs> and the lads who have got the green and gold Harry Potter scarves desperately trying to batter the doors down. Um, to the point, actually, by the way, you know, let's see what happens with all this because you know. You know, England's next European qualifier is going to be played behind closed doors because of fans kicking doors in to get into grounds and stuff. I wonder if there'll be any proper sanctions against United if something happens this time. Um, but again, not that I, I'm opposed to protests because they should be protesting their owners. Um, but yeah, falls a bit on falls a bit on deaf ears. But you're right on the pitch. That's going to be a mega atmosphere. And this is why, again, let's do it. First time this season. Derby game in inverted commas. Form book goes out the window. They'll be baying for blood. And it's a, it's a, going to be a big atmosphere. It's going to be a completely different game of football to last season because of that. But it's Liverpool's mission to make it that game a game yeah, in look, some regard. Look, you talked about Liverpool's record at Old Trafford not being good. It's, it's terrible. You mentioned the stats earlier. But actually, if you look at the last 10 Premier League games, they've only beaten us once. You know, we've had six draws in that time, which probably is too many that, that I like, you know, it's too many for me, but we've beaten them three times. You know, so actually on the balance of play, I said that on the starting 11 show earlier, I'm taking a draw at Old Trafford every season, mm-hmm. like no matter where they are in the league table, because to me, it doesn't matter how good a side they are. They are Manchester United and that's a tough fixture for Liverpool. Whether it's a tough fixture for City or Tottenham or whatever, it doesn't matter. You know, Arsenal, it's not the same rivalry as Liverpool or Manchester United have. It's like Everton's a tough fixture for us. It's not for 19 other teams in the Premier League or there's loads of teams that don't think it's a tough fixture because it's just not the same as when Liverpool play Everton. Liverpool, Man United, there's a tough fixture. I'll take a draw now because it means it didn't get beat. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, no. Having absolutely. said that, though, our away form is pretty decent so far this season. I mean, you said throw form out the window. Our away form is incredible yeah. so far this season. But was it? But we scored three goals in, in the past eight. Is and, it? and they're less good at Old Trafford. Their away form is the thing that everyone's been making a stink over in, mm-hmm. in, in 2020. But that's why I think they'll get to play counter attack and football. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is what Ollie wants because it's what he knows. Mm-hmm. And to be fair, if you were going to pick an approach to play Liverpool at the moment, that's how you would do it. That's Absolutely. how teams are getting joy against us is by committing men to attack and going, well, we'll trust that we'll hold out 
and we'll you know we won't we just won't stop attacking Liverpool because you might because you because you kind of might as well. No, Not with Harry Maguire at the back. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what their availability is like, of course, in, in due time. But yeah, yeah, may, maybe. But also, would anyone have said that Brentford's defence should should be absolutely exceptional and all that kind of stuff? You don't know, do you? The point is, is that Liverpool are still vulnerable. There's, there's very few teams in the world that aren't vulnerable to counter attack. If you're going to commit men to to trying to win games of football, which we are, because I think we're equipped to face off against teams who parked the bus because that's how everyone undid us last year and there haven't been too many teams that have actually done that in yeah. you know the main other ones certainly of course there's problems haven't um right we've got a few more obviously we've got loads more things to talk about in this game but we actually spoke to uh, the aforementioned Mark Goldbridge of the United stand to get an opposition preview from him that full thing is streaming on the redmentv.com but here's a clip from that if I had to bet, I think he would go with a back four, which he saw last night. So Shaw, Maguire, Lindelof, wan I can't imagine he won't pick McTominay and Fred, even though I'd love to imagine it. Um, <laughs> he just, he just, he's obsessed with these two players and they are very energetic, but they're not very difficult. They, the thing is about them is that people think they're not very good at passing and they're not, but they're also terrible defensively. They don't win many 50-50s and they definitely don't pick the runners. So if you've got people running from the midfield, they don't pick them up. Rashford will start, Bruno will start, Ronaldo will start. So I suppose, I suppose the only the only debate point is if he'll go with Greenwood on the right-hand side, which he seems obsessed with doing. But again, I think it plays into Liverpool's hands because two wide forwards who want to score goals, you need a bit of balance there. But I can't see him throwing Sancho into a game like this. So I'd say he'll probably start with the same team. As much as I disagree, I think I think he will. So no Pogba? And would that be the right call for you? Would you would you, would you want Pogba in the team? I know he, got, he was left on the bench last night. I would want Pogba in the team because I think, it's a, again, it's a failing in coaching that you can't get the best out of Paul Pogba yet. A couple of weeks ago, he's winning the Nations League and he's in the half-time giving, a, you know, basically a speech and it's like... We, it, Whatever anyone thinks about Paul Pogba, he's a fantastic footballer and we don't get the best out of him. So I appreciate that Pogba in a United shirt hasn't been great at times, but we definitely don't get the best out of him. And I can't, I, I, I don't think football's for people if they think Scott McTominay should be starting ahead of Paul Pogba. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, I know McTominay will give you an honest desire and passion, but it's a failing in coaching if you've got to go for that over a, over a footballer. And Paul Pogba was a footballer. Amazing. Yeah, Mark Goldbridge of the United Stand having a good old chat with Steele. Streaming now on the RevenTV.com. Yeah, if you're talking about a failure of coaching of all you've got a social chat. Great. Loads of that. I love, genuinely love Oppo previews with United fans when they're not very good. Um, because it's like it's I, I like it almost as much as Liverpool content. Well, it's the one week, as you say, when we're not allowed to slate them, so let them do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah, exactly. That's it. That's it. Go and go and go and check that out right now. Um, we've got a bunch of super chats. Um, Trig Josh kicked things off early doors. Said hi, guys. When Liverpool beat Man United at Old Trafford, will that be Ole's game over and set coins to continue? Um, <laughs> Ronald's recommended. Oh, Ronaldo's recommended to Dan to the board. Yeah, it could well be that moment for him, Josh. Um, I think Ronaldo's going to become player manager and then take the captain's armband off Maguire and give it to himself. Yeah. I, I, I'm, t- <laughs> I'm, t- I'm telling you, that's the only thing I can see happening. There's, there's two, one or two Brilliant. things that's going to happen because all this stuff is like they won't sack Solskjaer. But if it becomes, if they, if we were to beat them, and it was a, but and if we were to do it well, and I don't think it will go that way necessarily. But if we were to put an embarrassing defeat on them, and they have another couple because they've got this, they've got a, an actual run of fixtures coming up, haven't they? If they were to struggle in them, they might just be faced with no choice. Oh well, and good Gary never going on Sky and going, oh they won't sack him, they won't sack him. Like no Gary, they will because the fans will will lose their heads and, and they'll have no choice, and that's the problem with it. With that they'll have to face. Yes, there's talk of Zidane, but I, I, I can, the only thing I can see ever happening is Ronaldo coming in. Literally, I wouldn't shock me if Ronaldo came in as like a player coach, but like maybe Ferguson comes back in as some oh sort of like days. yeah. And imagine I literally had this conversation with someone the other day, and, and part of the reason that they won't sack him, which is says a lot about it, is there's no one out there. Keeping him because who else is there who's going to go and take the job? Yeah, that's easy. That's it. Um, yeah, we got a great comment here from Liam Bento um, saying, Nightmare scenario Solskjaer sacked after losing to Liverpool and United hires Diego Simeone as a replacement. It's hard enough playing United without that. Yeah, I mean, at least we'd be done with Old Trafford for the season by by the by the end of this weekend. That'd be something that would um, that would terrify me, but they they wouldn't they wouldn't sign him because he's not 
it's not the United way or whatever it's it like is. Yes, man, is he? Yeah. Yeah. And also, yeah. And and at the moment, I'm not sure he would necessarily want to walk out on Atletico at this point. I mean, he's he had, did he's after had, the game, neither thing. Well, yeah, he was on Klopp, didn't he? <laughs> Minch back. Doesn't know. Doesn't shake hands. Yeah. You, do you not? Diego is there, is there? Why have we not heard this about Diego Simeone prior to? Yeah, prior he didn't need to do this and then run off. Yeah. Yeah. Eva Peterson with 55 knocks. Thank you. Saying uh, where does Salah? rank amongst the Premier League greats just quickly greats oh third okay wow really bit specific at the behind oh, I was going Henry to... and Shearer fourth <laughs> if you sure the one and where I was going to go yeah he's top five I, top five. I think in the time because I, I don't think it's it's not been long enough since Aguero leaving for him to find his ranking yeah. and where he fits and all that because I think he, he still gets I know he doesn't get forgotten about because I didn't moments. forget about him then but no 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 but I think in a general sense people don't ha- don't mention him in the same breath as the great ones what he should do because he's a great goal scorer I think Salah if the if he carries on like he is this season people will think of him the same way they think of Thierry Henry because not only does he score the goals he gets the assists to go with it as well so yeah interesting I just went strikers then by the way yeah yeah because yeah. otherwise Gerard's up there like yeah, yeah. Um, Liam Bento with 35 Zars any particular reason why Madame Tussauds would make Mo Salah look like a Miami Vice villain masquerading as a nightclub that's owner that's so true what have they done can anyone answer the question because we've, we've been talking about this in the office all day Salah if you haven't seen it check out our Twitter by the way um, Salah's Instagram. gone in this like what on Instagram on Instagram follow them all yeah thanks Ross <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah and vote for us in awards in future as well um, the, um, the he's got this the big collar the white suit no shirt on underneath it's, someone's made that decision and it's probably Mo Salah and I can't fathom what what was he offered options? Was he given the option of a Liverpool kit? Was he given the options of like a tracky? Was he and did he just go? Or did he go, no, 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 no. Scrap it all. Here's this suit that I've bought. And I haven't got the bottle to wear it in real life. So can you put it on me waxwork? I don't know. Like the no share thing was a bit strange, wasn't it, really, for me? It's just like it's a bit like Miami Vice meets the Matrix. Yeah. Like he's got he's been plugged into the Matrix, but he's gone somewhere really nice. Yeah. Um, rather than a hellhole. Well, I said that that was that my, my reading on this is can only be it's like the Matrix where you become the, the interpretation of yourself. So that's how Salah sees himself. He sees that as being like his best version. And there's me looking back at my 17 year old self thinking that was me. I picked. (laughs) (laughs) You'd have like long sleeve t shirt underneath the short sleeve t shirt and undercut. Absolutely, a worker shirt going on, like, you know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah, weird. Maybe Um, a bike chain hanging from my combat. (laughs) David Fern uh, with another super chat. Flying in. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, What was the result the last time out at Old Trafford with Ronaldo in their lineup? I've no idea. I'm presuming he means the 4 1, but I, I haven't checked that Was one. Was that the last time? Could well be. If everyone wants to corroborate that, please do. Jack Richardson, afternoon, lads. How are we? We're good. Did anyone else hear Savage's commentary last night? Oh, it was terrible. Yeah. Me and Ross were talking about it just before we went live, weren't we? Two words. Viva Ronaldo. <laughs> Goodbye. Good night. It's, a three, it's, it's three at best. Yeah. Four, Four, possibly. Yeah. 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 Spell it wrong. Yeah. Good night. Um, it, I just. Look, there's two ways of being a commentator, I think. And he's gone, I don't want to be dead boring. So actually, at the beginning of when he was starting to get excited, I'll be honest, I was like, oh, this is a nice change, hearing someone who's genuinely happy to be there. But by the time he'd finished wanking everyone in Old Trafford off, I was really bored of it. Like, And it was pathetic, to be quite honest with you. Like, he, he was brown-nosing Manchester United so much, it was embarrassing. It was like an attempt to try and claw at being Liverpool's famous European knights. Yeah, That's it really what was. what it felt like, and it's, it's not. Yeah, it's not. Nope. It's the group stages, lads. Yeah. Again, it's the group stages. Chill out. I mean, it's good to get good results, and it's good to have late wins and late wins. Late equalisers are great. Let's not, let's not take it. Let's not take away from it. But yeah, it's the group stage against Atalanta. I mean, to be fair, we lost in Manfield, so it's... Uh, yeah, they were missing two players, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Trick Josh, will Man United offer a straight swap for deal for Salah for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to top Real Madrid's insults? I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I still think I'd, I'd, I still think I'd rather have Eden Hazard than Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. To be fair, but um, it's all right, we need 
No, we've got two. We've got a backup striker. We're I'd fine. have I'd have Ole doing like the stadium tour, the museum tour, and just have him positioned outside the uh, the, the one the, he won. Yeah, he can just go. <laughs> and, this, and this is the one that I won, and you're like, uh, which is now owned by Liverpool Football Club. Well done, prick. Um, great, right? Yeah, we um, we're going to talk about Liverpool's uh, selection headaches and all that good stuff to come uh, in a few moments. But we have got a trivia question: Liverpool and United drew one-one in their, uh, at Old Trafford in their first league meeting of the twenty-first century. But who scored the goals? Everyone, mates here. We've got a fantastic brand new show for you streaming now on the RedmenTV.com. It is the Debate Show, a fantastic new addition to our amazing Liverpool lineup on our streaming platform. Uh, in this segment from that, you're going to hear us debating if we had to swap three of our first team players for three of Man United's players, what would we do? What would we do? Listen to this. Right. Gun to your head. Someone forces you to trade three of Liverpool's start and 11 for three of Manchester United's start and 11 for the game at the weekend. And to clarify this, it means that the three players that are coming out of your team go straight into their start and 11 and three that come out of their start and 11 go straight into our start and 11. And there's an obvious easy way out of this that you could you could cheat it by just handing off a load of crap or perceived crap or lesser players from Liverpool's squad and getting good players from United. That's not the case for a number of reasons because let's say you trade out Nico for... Uh, you know, for Cristiano Ronaldo, you've got you've still got to put Cristiano Ronaldo in your squad, so you're still losing quality from Liverpool's team. I whatever, think, I think you can be the arbitrator at this point. Yeah. So, but and, and so it's got to be as fair. My my logic on this was almost like pick your start and eleven, or pick your 13, 14, 15 from who you'd be made up for them to start at Old Trafford, and you've got to give up three of those for this okay. for for this game. Can I go? First? I'm so sorry. Can I go first? You may. Go on, I will swap out Andy Robertson for Luke Shaw. Okay. Because I think they are very both very good, mm-hmm. and you're not losing too much. And I'm not. I think Andy Robertson's brilliant, but I'm not terrified of playing against them. Mm-hmm. Like there's some Man United players that I just don't want on my team. Mm-hmm. Like Pogba is not getting touched because he is not playing for the Liverpool team. Like Klopp would kill him. Yeah. So that that can't happen. I think Robertson I, and Shaw's skill sets are very very similarish. Yeah. I think Robbo's better than him, mm-hmm. but I don't think the drop off is that much. Like, for example, other areas of the pitch, I think there are too big. There are drop offs that are too big. So, in, in my head, I'm going for lads who are very similar. So, my, I'm going to pitch Robertson for sure as my first answer. I don't know what your thoughts on that. Hi, yes, welcome back. Um, yeah, the trivia question before we went was Liverpool and United drew one all in their first Old Trafford League meeting of the 21st century, but who scored the goals? Ross Chanley, any guesses? Danny Murphy. Incorrect. Oh, who scored yes. in the next two? Ah. Michael Owen. Nope. Dennis Irwin. Uh, nope. I'm Mill Heskey. Nope. Gerard. Nope. Gary Mack. Nope. Reset. Nope. No, don't care. Robbie Fowler. Nope. Is I guess it United goal scorer. I did. Uh, Danny Sober. I've said, and I said <laughs> uh, York. No. Solskjaer. Yes. Hey. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer scores the first goal between these meetings at Old Trafford in the Don't new millennium. Don't remember this one at all. Patrick Berger. <sighs> oh. Wonderful left foot. Wonderful. <laughs> oh, was that in the green kit? I do not One know. of the left, Probably, foot, left possibly, foot. maybe. Um, there you go. Yeah. What's the equivalent of the right footers? Wand. It's not. You can't have a wand of a right foot. It's so what is it? Right a rocket? Is it? What is it? Do, do you say anything? It's just, a, it's just a very. It's it's like yeah. I don't know. It's just it's just a positive left. It's one of the few positive lefty <laughs> things, isn't it? In the in in, in the whole world. Oh, um, I've got a wand of a left foot. Yeah. What is it? There's got to be something that you can say about because there's, no, right well, there's no romanticism about having a good right foot. That's the that's the thing. He's got a foot like a traction engine. There you yeah. go. Um, out of interest, um, I just thought it was quite funny. Liverpool subs. Liverpool had five subs that day at Old Trafford. Um, I won't even, even test people on this. Jorgen Nielsen, Rigobert oh. Song, Steve Staunton, Danny Murphy, and Michael Owen. Eric Meyer started for Liverpool in that game. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> You're starting Eric Meyer at Old Trafford? Oh, Alongside Titi Kamara. Oh, my days. Yeah. Now, that is a forward line for the ages. Now, if you'd have told me that that was the forward line for that game, I still wouldn't have guessed either of them as the first goal scorer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You'd have, you'd have, you'd have, definitely not one of them. The thing is, they scored so rarely that you'd, you'd remember them scoring. Like, like we'd be watching, we'd have seen that clip a million times if we'd seen them score. I love Tizi Kamara. He's yeah. just, he's the, he's the ultimate cult hero. 
And then there's Divock as well, to be fair. Like. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, the ultimate, ultimate. Um, right, okay. Um, yeah, Talking of ultimate. So speaking of ultimate, <laughs> let's see a little thing. We actually got this really interesting thing through from them um, to find if you want to know how the Liverpool players are performing on an ultimate team. Um, the current best performing Liverpool player uh, from all game weeks so far. Shock! It's Mohamed Salah, 127 points. Um, second is Sadio Mane. Third is Bobby Firmino. Bobby Firmino on 58 points, right? But it comes with the stat uh, that he was the ultimate fan player uh, of the week. Um, got he got 41, 41 points, points last week. He got more than my entire team got. Only yeah. by one point, but I had him on my bench. Got it. Yeah, and just one I, I wanted people to keep an eye out for. So if you if you're wondering because you obviously get you get base gold silver cards, the best performing silver cards at the moment ones to watch out for: Mikel Antonio on 93 points, Timu Pukis on 68, Mason Greenwood obviously ahead of this game, Ismail Assar, Saeed Ben Rama, Bobby Firmino of course, Matt Bobby's only a silver. Decore don't get him now because he's obviously injured. Mopai McGinn and Gabriel Jesus all not. So you know you can get the ultimate fan gold plus things but it's interesting there there's some really really interesting silver I players got that you three can gold up. cards last week on my, on my free pack nice yeah very nice how did we do last week not very good I'll tell you now Chris I got 40 points nice and wh- what was the big mistake that you made the one that I just told them about about two minutes ago did you yeah Bobby on the bench yeah Bobby on the bench I got um... what's the other mistake you made not, uh, not using your captain and your golden boots. Oh, yeah. Put them on, ladies and gents. How many points did you get? 40. You still got more than me. 78 I got last week. Well made up with that Sadio Mane. Top 28 points I got from him. Oh, was he captain or something? Yeah. And Vardy with me golden boots got 24 points as well. Chelsea got 15. They were my highest scorers, I think, which is more than Mane, who got a goal and a couple of shots on target as well. Yeah, different. Yeah, so yeah, obviously you can, you can work out the point scoring system in the app, but uh, yeah, I always find that quite interesting. Uh, right, let's talk about the match uh, this week then. Do we think there's anything, uh, Chris, to be gleaned from what we did substitution wise? You know, the, I hadn't really thought about it, but it was something Neil Jones brought up to me on Geno Insight today that we subbed the lads on yellow cards very quickly. I hadn't really thought of it that way at the time because obviously we normally make substitutions based on making people making sure people are fit and fresh, but his interpretation was given what Atletico were like when they were down to 10 men in particular and how they would use the dark arts, the advantage and the crowd. Klopp carefully removed Milner and Trent from the, from the equation. So I don't know whether that... Normally we'd be like, well, that might hint at we might see Milner again this weekend. But no, maybe not. not for me. I, I, Trent, I think it's just it's Atletico, it's the dark arts. I don't think we can read too much into the Milner one or the Trent one for that because I think that's the thing that came into my head as soon as, you, as soon as we took him off. As far as... I think you can read something into Curtis Jones not travelling if you want to read something into Curtis Jones not travelling because I think it's so important that he's ready mm-hmm. that why disrupt him getting fit? Like that that was the big one for me. And whether he's there or not, we won't know. Will we until giving him every possible out, chance? They're giving him the chance to be fit and in the start eleven, I think. I yeah, I think you can read into the yellow cards in the sense of not for this one, but we're playing out that to go next. I have Milner and Trent available for them. You kill them, you more or less not about the Champions League and you through, and you've got two dead rubber games where if they're suspended, then it's fucking sound because you don't have to play anyway. Yeah, and also again, just that point of you could see it with the penalty decision. Like, I know it gets turned over by VAR in the end, but like the, the the crowd makes that more likely to happen in those situations, and all it takes is one guy holds his face in a in a random yeah. random tackle. Random, you're not getting away with the James Mill, the Man City thing in the Wonder. Um, no. But as far as this game goes, it's I can't see there being major changes start for this one really. Yeah, start, we'll start start for Fabinho's the big one, yeah. isn't he? And 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 we've surmised that's just to do with obviously training time and, and a little bit of fitness after the international break. That maybe we've seen this before, haven't we, Chris? Where he know we know how important Fabinho is and Klopp does and he'll do everything to safeguard him for the big league match at the weekend. Yeah, and that's right because there's no one like that in our squad. Um, it's one of those positions that I think gets overlooked when people talk about transfers. I and mean, I don't know how you sign a backup DM, but because Jordan Henderson can do it and because James Milner can do it, it's kind of overlooked. But he's... If, if, you, could, if you measured the drop-off from first-teamer to the next one in their position... I think right back and DM are potentially, and Salah 
are the three biggest drop-offs mm-hmm. with with their understudy, as it were, in the squad. Well, we did. Interesting. It was a, we did a new show on the <clears throat> on the website this week, the Reds Debate Show, and one of the points was ranking our three most important players, and that it. It was hard to get it down to three, and Fabinho was one of the ones that ended up becoming quite an important conversation, mainly because recency bias, of course, because it was it was so tangible how much more control we had over the midfield just by putting him in at half time against Atletico, and I think that Chris's points right there, Ross's for games like this. I mean, no, not I mean, no one's making the case for not playing Fabinho. By the way, I can't think anyone yeah. would make the case, but. This is undoubtedly just a game where he does he strides in for for a number of reasons, but for everything we've sort of hinted yeah, at already. Yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting to see that the way Man United set up because they, they kind of went like a four two four yesterday. But I like I hate him, but I think if he's in your team, you quite like him. It's Bruno Fernandez. Mm. Stop him. Stop his supply. But is it his pass for? Was it the Rashford goal? I think it was where he just played it around the corner. Yeah, no, it's amazing. You need someone who can read that play and stop it and, and stamp it out. Equally, the support for the full backs because I'm sure we're going to want Trent and Robbo to bomb forward. I just think. Are you right about the drop off? Henderson can do a, a good job there, but I think it's hard when you're playing against a good midfielder. They play Pogba, Fernandez, and I don't know McTominay. That's much better than what Watford put out with, you know the weekend before. It's it's difficult, but Fabinho is is, is a must start for me. I don't, I, in fact, I don't know why he didn't start against Atletico. I've got and, a and it showed. I've got a start about Bruno Fernandez here with 26 shots and 31 chances created. United's Bruno Fernandes has been directly involved in a higher share of his team's attempts this season than any other player in the Premier League, 41%. Uh, nine of his chances created have been for Mason Greenwood with no player setting up a teammate more so far this term, which tells you how important he is and you know he plays in that area of the pitch where Fabinho is. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing as well with him, I think he's shown signs of it before in, in other games that he's played. If you put someone on him and you frustrate him, you piss him off, his head goes... Look, that should be one of Liverpool's targets. Once they, they quiet the crowd down, get on him, stop him, but piss him off as well and wind him up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's phenomenal, isn't he? Yeah. Like you know, yes. I'm not sure how. I'm not sure if he, you know, for this conversation, not that it's relevant really, because we'll never get to see it. But whether he would function in a Liverpool midfield, but he's that good that you you could see. He uh, works damn hard as well. Yeah. Like there's no, there's, there's. I don't look at him and go, "Oh, you're a bit weak at that." I look at him and go, "What a player!" Yeah, yeah. in every side of it, particularly at the moment, you know, with. Given that we're transitioning in the midfield to maybe fit more Harvey Elliott type players into the side, of having you know we've clearly got more scope for someone who's more atta- certainly more attacking in a, in a midfield. Now he's, he's great. And to be fair, mentioned there, Mason Greenwood. I yeah. really like Mason Greenwood. I think again, and and love the time to say it. Rashford, I'm re- I'm I'm, the, I'm not jealous of many footballers. Like to be honest, I like Bruno Fernandez. I'm not jealous of Bruno Fernandez, but because because let's be honest, he's just another star that's been bought into the league but to have two homegrown local lads yeah. like Greenwood and, and Rashford yeah. I know we've got some of our own so I'm like I'm, you know, but imagine having another two <laughs> who yeah. happen to play in the front in the front three you play to either side of a front three and they're there and they're going to be they can be there for as long as they want they've got pace to bear and they've got amazing shots and they've got a great eye for goal and particularly in the case of Rashford it turns out that he's actually a wonderful man as well um, he's very he's very scouser I would have him as an honorary scouser any day of the week not that many Manx would think that's some something to be lauded but it very much is the thing with Greenwood as well he's, he's, he's such a natural striker but with both feet like, that frightens me because it's unpredictable like you know I think he had a few goals before before during the game yesterday of either foot, you know, we can just do him a bit like Salah actually, you know, with the Watford and the Man City goals, like pick your poison, he you might get all come undone. The only, the only real question, well, there's two. I think it's that who's that third midfielder? Yeah, and is it Jotter or Bobby? Yeah, they're the two questions, aren't they? You're absolutely right. You and for, for me, I'm going Kurt Jones. I think Kurt Jones has been if he's available. If he's available, if he's not available, you've got Milner. You've got Cater and you've got who's the third one? Ox. Ox. I'm not asked out of the three, to be perfectly honest with you. I think, you know, Cater has had a bad week, you know, outside of football and a bad half uh, at Atletico, but I don't blame him for that performance at all. I, I, I said it on the night, I don't know how many times, but there was three lads there that weren't doing well when we didn't have the ball. Yeah. Um, Naby Keita was the easiest substitution because you've got Milner's experience. You've got the captain on the field and you're moving him into his rightful position when you bring Fabinho in. If you've got Milner away at Old Trafford, I'm totally cool with that. And I'm so happy to say that after Ox's performance midweek when he came on, yeah. I'd be buzzing to see him again as well. Yeah. So let, let me just say, like, 
rather than be negative and pick who I wouldn't want, I'd be happy with all three. Big week for Naby because obviously we've seen it previously. It was something Neil Jones mentioned on Geno Insight. You know, we, when he when he was hooked against Real, that was it for him. Aston Villa as well, wasn't it? Yeah, what about it? We didn't see him season. again as what Paul. Oh, yeah, 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 that was that was like. That was him done for the rest yeah. of the season, pretty much after that. Where I, I don't think he'll do that at this point of the season because it, it, there's no point. But we also know Klopp does like to go to lads. No, it's all right. Go and prove me. Go and prove me wrong. Like about Dejan Lovren being hooked against Spurs, and then he's in the next week. Yeah, because Klopp likes to go. No, go on, go and prove me wrong. And it's interesting because it, 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 what Klopp said post match hinted at what we all saw was we were a little bit weak on the side of the midfield that Naby was playing in. But he also then referenced he's played a lot of football in the internationals, and you know that was it five games in eleven days. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah, and, and that you know he needed to. We needed to. He said, "I basically said I got it wrong. The midfield had played too much football." So if that's more the case, it does lend itself to giving Naby a little bit of a, I'm taking you off here, but I'm giving you a, a crumb of comfort that it's not because you were shite. Yeah. It's because I may be looking for a little bit more physicality and you're clearly, you've played a lot of footy, so good work yeah. so far. But it's, it's hard to manage because I'm sure Naby's sat down going, I want to get back on the football pitch, I want to prove, prove me worth and prove that I'm right. The thing is, just from a fan's perspective, it feels like a gamble. Whenever you play, when it's like the first 10, 15 minutes, he scores his amazing goal, which a lot of people seem to have forgotten about, by the way, um, was an absolute cracker. And then whatever it was, whether it was kind of, you know, the, the combination of field that we played didn't suit him or, you know, credit to Atletico Madrid as well. I don't think enough people were saying that at the time. Their, their midfield is, is amazing and they overran us. Um, I, 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 I'm the same as Chris. I, if he started, I'd have no concerns at all. No. I don't think. And I was going to say it's a gamble, but also uh, it'd be in himself to kind of want to prove himself, even on like a, a bigger stage. But it's all down to what the training is. If Kurt Jones has, has been there all week and he's fine, I know he's, he's staking his claim for his place, then fine. I, I like Naby in games where we dominate the ball. And I think yeah. we might dominate the ball at Old Trafford. Yeah. I I, th- I think it's, because it's a little bit, he has a little bit of a harder time when you've. You've got you, they're attacking you. It's just that thing of does Bruno Fernandez do? Can he do what Lamar was doing? Can he do what João Felix is doing? And would you just is is his job if Naby's on the pitch is just go and sit, go and play around Mate, Naby Keita? Uh, my first thing I'd be doing if I was Jurgen Klopp after the game is going to Jordan Henderson and going to James Milner and go have a little word with him about professional fouls for me with you, yeah. Yeah. Mm. will you? Because yeah. Atletico did it all game against us. I've seen United last night do it with Ronaldo. Yeah. You know, that's the tide of the thing where I think players need to step in and go, Naby, in that situation. I mean, Milner's the perfect one, isn't he? <laughs> Look how many yellow cards I've got here, lad. Do that. Just do that. That's all you need to do. It's not, we're not saying get the ball and start an attack. We're saying bring it down and let us get set. So I'd have the players intervening for me on some of this stuff as well. Yeah, no, I agree. I do agree with that one. It's an interesting call. I mean, can Curtis Jones, if he's fit, that's a big game to throw him straight back into if he's had a little bit of some some injury doubts and obviously, you know, but players are made in those kind of environments. That'll be a massive boost to someone like him to, to set a table. Well, here's your, here's your position in the squad. Oxley Chamberlain might feel a bit disappointed because there's a world where Naby's underperformed. If Kurt is a slight doubt... Milner's 35, you know, are we going to ask Milner to go again? Oxlade Chamberlain might be thinking, again, where do I where do I stand if I'm not if I'm not being given this opportunity? I think if you've got Fabinho and Hendo in there, I don't see anything really wrong with giving Ox that, no. that go. If, if you give Cater a rest as well, because I what you were saying there before about people when we have a lot of the ball, it's Brighton the week after. There's no Armin playing in, in, in that game, maybe that, that, that'll suit him because they, obviously they'll, <laughs> the template was to sit back. What, what you don't of, want is Cater to go, Pulled off at half time yeah. and then played full ninety against Preston. <laughs> yeah, that's what you don't want because that looks really bad. Yeah. But also, you don't want him yeah. pulled off at half time against Manchester United. True that. Yeah, well, that's I mean, and that's the knife edge. That's where the man management comes from in this regard. Is that as Naby the problem been wasn't off, Naby's performance per se? It was, it was the, the lack of Fabinho. Yeah, that and if you frame it like that, someone's got to come off. Yeah, and I would have taken any of them off. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think Ox is a good shout because I think their weak spot is their centre backs. You know, well, it's a dangerous thing to say ahead of the game, but if I'm looking at what we're going to do, what we're, are we going to go for the fullbacks? Wam Sackers are really good at defending. Luke Shaw's performances and his form past what? Six, and again, six, salary six, has six, been really yeah, good. So. Yeah, six to ten months. Well, what are you going to go for? Well, Ox driving the midfield. Then you've got runners in Bobby Manny, if it is, and, and Salah in there as well. Aaron Gray was terrible against Leicester. I know he's, been, he's come back from an injury and he's not right, but if I'm thinking of a weak spot you want to go for or someone that you want to mess with mentally during a game, it's the centre-backs. Yeah. 
Yeah. This is the this is the fatalist football fan in all of us, isn't it? We worry too much about what they're going to do. Yeah. They've got to worry about us. Yeah. Yeah. Seeing our front three. Yeah. They've got to worry about which one's starting, Jotaro or Firmino, and yeah. how many how do you stop Mo Salah and Sadio Mane? Yeah. We're all four. I yeah. wouldn't do that. I, 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 madder things have happened. So yeah. That might be the answer to the who's the who's the third midfielder because if he doesn't trust. If he doesn't trust it in Ox and he doesn't trust it in Cater and Jones isn't fit and Milner's overplayed, then he might just go all four and might say, fuck it. We're just going to, you know, you'll counter attack us. Well, this is a game we're just going to go and get get one and get done. And that's the thing that's different about the about recently, like Brentford and Atletico and AC Milan were, were in danger of being blown away and went. Let's keep our heads and let's look. Let's just keep throwing bodies at this problem because we might, we might as well. I don't know with that old traffic crowd. I think they are, they will be on a knife edge, and I think there's as a possibility that you can kill their crowd off if you get if you do blitzkrieg them in in the opening thing. So that's going to be really interesting to see. Um, there's some great super chats. I'm going to catch up on. Uh, I don't actually get this one from Bazit. One is just prime equals Coutinho, Torres, Suarez, or Mane, Fowler, Salah. There's some great names uh, apart from maybe Coutinho. Some reference to the Premier League players we talked about before, maybe. God, yeah, but Coutinho. Wow. Um, Sean Balak. If we had to sell Salah because FSG wants to keep the wage structure, could each of you identify one realistic replacement and how much we'd get back? I think we'd get hundred and something odd million for Salah, and you could literally go and buy anyone, anyone you wanted. But the players that you're talking about, you'd have to break your weight structure for anyway. If it's Kyle and Lauren Mbappe, the players that you're naming, you're going to have to break your weight structure anyway. So. And then don't do that. Just get Rafinha, get dead upset for three weeks, and then continue just have another player who turns out to be boss for us. <laughs> and we move on with our lives like we always do. Yeah. 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 Let's do that. Let's but do let's that. not sell him. Yeah, that's not. Let's just break our weight structure. Yeah. Our full dodge, yeah. Is it critical we do not show United too much respect on Sunday something we've been guilty of at times at Old Trafford the opening 20 minutes against Atletico should be the blueprint go for it I agree I mean Chris we were there um, we, we went there to watch us at Old Trafford as reigning European champions and we shit the bed I think we shit the bed that day I thought we had to bring Lallana on to score a goal <laughs> Yeah, um, it was a bit of a, a crappy VAR decision in, in there for United, of course. But Is that, did they foul a Rigi on the halfway one? Yeah, yeah it, it was. And that, I'm hoping, and, and this is funny because I'm going to make a case, and then when we do the derby build up, I'm going to make the exact opposite case for the same point that hopefully we've broken the old Trafford hoodoo a bit by doing it in front of no crowd, and maybe we can take something in there. Because to the point, to the point, I don't think United are going to be. I think United's style of play is going to be massively different. They will have the crowd, which is a big thing, but I think the crowd can be used. Uh, there's a more of a chance of us using it to our advantage. But either way, I'll, I will make can the I, opposite point. Can I, can I make it, and stuff. Uh, right, they've come from behind in midweek, haven't they? Mm -hmm. And they also watched the day before Liverpool get two goals, pegged back. All right, we were going to win it. If, you're, if you were in the crowd on Wednesday night for United and Liverpool go ahead, I think it fires them up, Paul. I really do because I think they want another one of those things. So you saying don't go ahead? Just gradually beat them down and make them understand that they don't have a chance in the game is what I'm saying. Like suffocate the game. Go go one nil up after 25 minutes and don't give them the ball for 10 and make them lose hope. It's like that's the important thing for me. Rather than blitzkrieg them and go two 0 up and then the crowd naturally like because because Manx and Scousers are similar in a lot of ways, then they get fired up. Like nah, take it away from them. Just just beat them down slowly. Can we do that? What three 0 Because okay, I, I, cause, cause I get what you're saying, but we sat at home watching it going. No, oh, no I'm, not saying, I'm not saying just one oh, nil. Like, okay. After twenty five, okay. and then two after fifty. Okay, sorry. But also three after seventy. Your personal comfort is completely fucking irrelevant. Just beat no, United no matter what. I don't okay, give a shit can't. whether you're comfortable whether we while we beat Man United. Why is he on a cushion? We then? don't win Manchester because he's too because that seat's too low and we know it. Um, uh, the question is only when you somewhere to get these. Amazing Liverpool seats. Yeah, province five. We could have got go. a third. Yeah, it was. We felt a bit cheeky asking for another one, and too tight to pay for it, for another one. They are very, very good quality though. Um, but yeah, look, let's have a um, let's have a, a little look at the Premier League table and how it stands so far. Going into this one, Man United down in sixth, heading into this game. It's mad. I, I, I I've been saying this all season long. You don't want. I don't think it'd be funny to sack another United manager. And I let's just wait. Let, and if they're if they're steadfast, they're not going to sack Ali, Ali regardless. Then let's have let's have a five 0 win to us. But there's a part of me that just wants him to just be 
good enough to keep his job. So, so obviously, obviously we win, but I, you know, it's something where they maybe feel like on oh, another day. I know I've got the perfect thing, dodgy VAR decision win to us. Where they go, no, and it was 90th minute as well. It's like, no, we were in the game and that decision was wrong. We get all the thing of a last minute winner yeah. with a shallow penalty. That's where I think the Atlanta game has helped because if we just beat them, there's more pressure on them, but it's just won a game. And it's that thing of, okay, there's another four weeks of Ollie in the yeah. job. The point that they're at now is that, you know, we're four points ahead of them in the table, which is not, it's a, you know, a win for them and it's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a point in it and all of a sudden they're right in the, the conversation right at the top of the table because we're, eight games into the season, but there's two ways it goes and, and the eternal optimist, because I know, because I've watched more of Liverpool in that position in the table than I've watched them in the position that they're currently in, where you where you, you, what you want to be a title challenge turns into a race for top four and it's because when you when you draw though that results those results out over a course of the season that's how you end up with 25 point gaps to the yeah. champions however if you're in title winning if you're a title winning caliber side then you do beat your rivals and get yourself right in and that's why united are in that awkward position at the moment i think they will end up by christmas in a fight where where they, where they don't realize it but all of a sudden post christmas january their fans or the conversation around united will be Getting back into top four, that will be how the narrative how do changes. How we get ahead of Brighton <laughs> and West Ham, Everton? Yeah, no, but but that and that's the thing. But this is this this game for me is that's the first step towards those conversations, um, and I, I want them not to realise it because you don't because it's not until you get get you get to the end of January and Man City or Chelsea. Us, you know, us have floored it, and you miles away, and you go, "Oh friggin' hell! How do we get that far out of the title race? Who's around? Oh god, we need to win the next two games to get into to, to get into fourth. That's what I'm. Yeah, I think that's what we're all, I guess, hoping for from uh, from United's perspective. Uh, let's have another quick look then at the uh, Premier League fixtures going on this weekend. Not that they really matter because it is the biggest game in the league. Well, maybe us. Is, is it? Is it still? Yeah, it's still us. Okay, uh, Chelsea, Norwich, no Lukaku, no Werner. So I would imagine Chelsea will still snot Norwich everywhere because you know Kai Havertz. Um, although a point made by Errol in our WhatsApp group that I bet Tammy Abraham's laughing his head off at the moment at, at that. Um, Arsenal, Villa, big game. Yeah, half twelve Saturday, and the other one obviously for us to keep an eye out on is Brighton still, I'm City. I'm still baffled that the Arsenal played the Monday night football and the Friday night football. But maybe if they had Europe, they wouldn't have. Yeah, maybe Brighton, Man City is five thirty on the Saturday. You know. Brighton, can they just go? Can they be that team that actually performs to their XG for once? That would be that would be, be nice. lovely, wouldn't it? Wouldn't yeah. it be just nice? Uh, right, okay. Let's get some um, score predictions, Chris. What do you think it's going to be? I think it's going to be three one to Liverpool. <laughs> what three one? That's the first sentence. What I had in my mind. Three one. Three one with Man United having taken the lead. Oh, lovely! And then we just pummel them. And they lovely. all go home early, and we get and they get to sing "Show Them the Way to Go Home" after sixty minutes. Oh, <laughs> That'd be glorious. lovely, glorious! Right. Please, some of that. Yeah, right. Never Listen, turns on Ollie. Loads more to come from us right now. Streaming on the RedmenTV.com. The aforementioned Oppo preview with Mark Goldbridge. Steve spoke to a double Olympian, uh, Bianca Walkden. Uh, we've got the Liverpool Library with Mirror journalist Brian Reed on his new book, uh, and I did a journal insight with Neil Jones as well, talking about the the impacts of Afcon and the fallout from the Athletic. Madrid game and a whole host more as well and injury updates on Thiago and Curtis Jones so do check that out streaming right now on the RedmanTV.com it's a streaming platform for Liverpool fans so if you want to get involved it's like Netflix for Reds uh, we've got some great stuff and some major revamps happening over there so perfect time to sign up gentlemen thank you so much it's been wonderful hopefully the weekend is wonderful too Chris and I will be back um, for the watch along so make sure you check that out what's he saying? Super chat, Super chat. fuck Chris has got to go. Uh, and and Amit, my favourite Oliism is when he was asked in the press earlier this week about Atalanta's approach and tactics. He responded by saying they play the Atalanta way. Amazing. <laughs> 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 on that bombshell. We'll see us all soon. Hey everyone, Mate here. Just a little insert from me to say that if you enjoyed this podcast and the other podcasts that we put out for free and you want more than my word, you can have more on the redmentv.com. Go over there, sign up and get extra bonus shows from us each and every week as well as a whole suite of video content, documentaries, features and interviews. But yes, you can also play those podcasts in your native podcasting app as well to have a seamless Redmen TV experience in your ears. TheRedmenTV.com, sign up there today.